Today we're chopping bark again. Hey, welcome to Bardscraft. My very epic plan is to make a elven stronghold using these large bark bricks. I've got a small elven army coming in, so they need something to defend. Before working with the bark, we need to make the base of the diorama, so let's start with that. Okay, I'll make the base from a thin sheet of cardboard. As you can see, it is quite large. Here is a mini for scale. On top of this thin layer goes another thicker bit of cardboard. This one is glued on with hot glue to avoid any warping. Yeah, that should be good. The lower layer is good because it can be placed quite flatly on the table. On top of this side I'll make a large hill with methods combined from these two builds. The Dragon's Gorge diorama and the Peasant Level Hut. I'll make some higher areas using bark and cardboard. These sides here are just stacked layers of cardboard bits. I was lucky to get plenty of this thick cardboard when ordering a bike. Nope, the scissor isn't good enough. Knife. Alright, here are all of the bits I need. Again, my glue of choice is hot. As you can see, none of this makes any sense, but in hindsight my plan is very sophisticated. I'll just take some of this bark and stick it in here. Yeah, and then I'll glue it in here. Okay, so I'll just fill all of this with bark bits. I'll show it when it's done. Okay, so I kept adding bits until it looked something like this. Now we can remove all of these little strings of hot glue. These hot glue blobs here are no problem. We'll still add more bark as flocking later. The shape I went for is a steep hill here I made from large bits of bark and then a sloping hill down here. The cardboard can be pressed down like this, so it's easier to cover the corrugations at later stages of the build. Yeah, that's a good natural slope. I think we can start building the stronghold now. For that we'll need large pieces of bark. Now I'll show you how to cut bricks from bark. This should be easy. Yeah, no problem. First I'll make a large bit. Like that. 
This piece can now be cut into roughly square shape. I think I'll make about 20 of these to begin with. I now have my bits ready and a vague plan at hand. By the way, if you want to learn how to cut bark like this, here are a few pointers. Get a cheap, decent chef's knife. Then work the blade so that the angle of the edge is quite small, perhaps 20 degrees. Then you just sharpen it a bit. Well, more than that. Usually my blade is quite dull, but it still cuts well because I have practiced the art of the blade and I apply lots of force. To make the walls a bit more interesting, I'll make this corner here from a large bit. Let's cut it into a interesting pointy shape. That's quite good, but if we want to add a battlement behind here, I think it's best to cut like this. Okay, perhaps some elven archers can shoot well from up here. Yeah, that should do. I made a total of four corners. I'll glue on battlements after we're done here. Between these two corners there shall be a gate of sorts, and quite conveniently these bits here work as stairs to up here, whatever this is. Perhaps we'll place a large tree here, yeah. This can now be steadily hot glued into place. I'll make sure to leave some room for grass and everything beautiful here. Hmm, the last one seems to fit right here. Nice. Cool, now I can start gluing in the bricks. By the way, if you can't find bark, you can also make kind of a similar build from just foam. Won't be as epic, of course. Any gaps are easily filled with these smaller bits. Yeah, I have a feeling this build will be exceptionally epic. By the way, if you are one of those folk that watch YouTube videos without any conscious effort, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content. Now we'll just have to finish the rest of the walls. I hope my bits are enough. Uh, no they aren't. Great, the walls are now roughly done. I'll still work on these holes later, but before that I'll cover the ground. I'll do that with bark choppings. Of course I could use sand instead, but 
I got so much bark laying around it would be a waste to throw it away. To begin with I only want the finer stuff so I'll separate the small bits. Yeah, that's good stuff to cover the ground with. To apply the ground flocking we need glue. Okay, I got the glue everywhere using a slightly wet brush. Now it's just as simple as to sprinkle it on. When doing this step, there is no such thing as too much glue. Next, the large gaps between the bark cliffs can be covered with lots of PVA glue plus some of the larger bark choppings. Yeah, now I'm quite happy with the coverage, so let's spray all of this with diluted glue. I'll continue working tomorrow, so it doesn't matter if this takes ages to dry. Well, good morning. This has now fully dried and it is quite sturdy. Before painting, I'm gonna add some more textures on the walls like this. I have just cleaned everything from little bark bits. Well, I guess I'll be doing that soon again. We can do the same on these stones as well. One more thing, I almost forgot to glue on these battlements made from bark. On these, minis can stand and defend the fortification. These bits are quite easy to make from bark. Just a flat rectangle shape that is slightly rounded. I'm also adding some extra textures. So we have one wood elven platform per corner. Yeah, these battlements will do nicely. Now we can just get rid of all of the junk. And then I'll go spray all of this black while my neighbors wonder what the flock is he up to. If you want professional painting advice, you have definitely not come to the right place. Tip number one, shake your can impatiently for probably a too short time. Two, protect your hands with your worst gloves and wear a jacket of matching base coat color. And three, don't spray up wind, it was a bit windy today. Good, this is starting to look like something. Now I'll continue painting the ground with a dark brown. This works best when the paint is slightly diluted. In previous quite similar builds, I have made the mistake of painting with a too dark brown. So let's see if this turns out to look better. After that comes the usual watery dark blue. I'm applying this on all of the rocks and cliffs. I still don't know what I'll do for the walls. I'm probably repeating myself across videos, but as you can see, the blue gets much darker when it dries over the black base coat. This is a good thing to keep in mind when painting terrain for the first time. You think that something is too bright, but it's actually quite good. Anyway, since I'll probably over and dry brush the stones and the walls in the same way, I think it's best to finish the ground. I'm doing that with a light brown. Might be a waste of mini paint, but anything to save some time. 
Okay, now I have decided how to paint the walls. I'll use darkened mixtures of these paints. I'm gonna start with the blue. And that was a bit too much paint on the brush to begin with, but now it's looking better. We can fix that with washes later. When painting like this, you can make your mixtures quite watery. Next we can work with the dark green. I'm applying this on roughly half of the wall. Next a overbrush with grey, with little paint on the brush. A bit too much there. Let's try again. Yeah, that's much better. The same grey works on the cliffs as well. Up to this point the bark has looked quite underwhelming, but all of that changes with a tan dry brush. Alright, now with the power of bark, I shall have the optimal amount of paint on the brush right at the beginning. What do you think? Is this optimal? Before and after, check out this one simple trick to turn into a more beautiful bark bit. Some of these inner surfaces were quite tricky to paint. Anyway, if there's at least one thing that I've learned from working with bark, it's that the cut and manually textured areas look much better than the natural patterns on the bark. At least they take the paint a bit better. Also, these peculiar maggot-eaten patterns look quite beautiful. It is time to apply some flocking. I'll still work with washes here and perhaps I'll do some details with colors such as blue or green. Anyway, I have three different homemade flocks. Here is the bright green one, the medium green and a much darker green. If you haven't used flocking on your terrain yet, you should definitely try out this. It's easy to make at home, you can do it. I'll put the link to how to make your flock tutorial in the descriptions, or somewhere around there. Anyway, this is how to apply the flock. Get some slightly diluted PVA glue on your brush and apply it wherever you want flocking. You usually need less coverage than expected. On this elven terrain I want quite a lot of grass, so I'm covering about 60% of the ground. Then on goes the medium flock. Now I have enough of the medium flock, so I'll add some of the brighter green on some places. Once you have the bulk of the flock in, you can go ahead and cover some spots that need attention. Ah, well, that wasn't beautiful, but it works. Yeah, I guess you can also cover large gaps and holes. Here there was a big hole that accidentally got a large clump of flocking into it. Good job. Yeah, that last bit was stupidly messy. Now I have a new battery in the camera, so I'm not in a hurry. And I have a much better way to apply the flocking. This empty herb container is almost perfect. 
Nothing I used earlier seemed to work that well. The flocking got stuck in these two small holes. The larger one is much better. What I still don't have is a precise way to apply the bright green. When flocking, make sure to cover some areas between and on rocks. That will look very good. This is especially a good method to hide ugly spots. What also looks good is some growth on the walls. I'll apply some flocking on the platforms and on the flat surfaces on the walls. This step is very convenient because it allows me to hide all the mistakes, such as hot glue and mildly failed painting. Good, now that the entire thing is coated in medium and bright green flocking, I'll remove the excess in a most messy way. Okay, now let's see what I can do with the dark green flocking. It is best to apply it on spots where the sun would not reach as much. Near the wall, under stones, in between some of these gaps, and on some spots where the ground is a bit too exposed. My flock salvaging process is very simple. I just pick up all the flocking I can find and I put it here in my box where I keep the medium flocking. We got all colors mixed in here, so let's say this is the ultimate medium flock. Once the flocking is done, it can be sealed in with diluted PVA glue. In this build as well, I decided to make hot glue mushrooms. This time I used barbecue sticks for the stalks instead of toothpicks, and then painted everything black. After the white highlight on top of the caps and stalks, I made a simple gradient from dark red to red and dark brown to brown. Then, as someone in the comments suggested, I used a stick to make the white dots. Introducing the crafting mora. The mushrooms are best glued in with a small pre-poke. Next a big tree goes somewhere here. I'll use these dried pine branches I got in the latest forest adventure video. First I need to make the bottom pointy, so it can be poked onto the terrain. That should do. Then my plan is to glue the sticks like this. For that the fit has to be quite good. Let's see if we can do it. I'll have to carve a bit in here. Good, now a dab of hot glue should do the trick. That didn't work, but I removed a layer. Let's see if it works again. As a reinforcement, I'll add just a bit more here, but I'll try to keep it clean. That should do. Before moving on, I'm removing any loose bark. I think the tree will look quite good when it's partially covered with bark. I paint the tree with diluted brown, green, and a black wash. I think it's funny, I'm painting a twig to look more like a tree. The paints have dried, so I'm dry brushing with a tan next. Not bad. To finish this, I'll try to use some of my waste product I get from making my flocking. I have done this once, but it can be a bit more difficult with such a large tree. Lots of glue and then go for it.
Yeah, this might work. Let's see if there's enough. Nope, there certainly wasn't enough of the green stuff. I barely got enough to add a bit on each branch. Well, it's no big deal. When I make more flocking, I get more stuff to add on these branches. Perhaps I'll call this the Elven Tree of Time. It grows slowly when I craft more. All of the branches are sprayed with glue, so now I can sprinkle on some flocking. What I like about this tree is that it won't block too much vision on the table. Okay, the tree goes here, just behind the wall. This is a very epic moment in crafting history. On goes the tree. Flocking of concealment. Next I'll cover some spots with diluted black. There are a few too bright areas, and spots where small bits of the bark has come loose. Fixed that. After that, I'll apply some diluted brown on the lower parts of the walls. In an attempt to make the walls appear perhaps a bit more magical, I'll apply some of this diluted blue on top of the walls. But just a bit, not too much. I got an idea. I'll take some of this same blue and then I'll gently highlight some of the edges. Just a bit is enough. I'll just do this on the top part of the wall. I want the grass to be a bit more vibrant, so I'll cheat a bit with a bright green. I'll just dry brush it real quick. Yeah, it works, don't tell anyone. What this build still needs are some flowers that are quite easily made. You roll and twist a piece of paper like this. Should look something like that. Then you paint it with yellow, for example. I left some areas white, then dry brushed with a red. These are very simple, definitely peasant level. I dry brushed these purple ones with blue. I'm still not sure if these look a bit off. Let me know what you think. Another missing detail is a bit of lichen. I put this into cracks where minis won't break it. Now that should look quite good. The last thing this diorama needs is an elf. Well, that's a very nice build also has some good weight to it. I have to say, now I'm like this much excited to paint my elves. We did take quite a lot of interesting approaches on terrain building, so I'll link all the relevant builds for you to avoid unnecessary questions. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, do subscribe and watch one of these videos next. Did you know Bardscraft videos are brought to you by Sacred Oats and Gold? If you appreciate my work very much, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks and goodbye.